I look like a vaguely confused Hogwarts student and I'm not really mad about it to be honest. Anyway, hello my dears. Um, today is another fun video and I'm quite excited because it was a lot of fun to research actually. Um, so we've covered autism existing historically in literature before, but what about other things? I mean, how did people explain autism before they knew what autism was? Now you may remember one of my first videos where we talked about the history of autism as a term and as a diagnosis, but that took place from the early to mid 1900s until the present. So what about all, all the before bits? There were a lot of before bits. Well, lads, today you are about to learn the answer. Well, not, not that I know everything, so we're gonna say an answer. Also, if you find this interesting, I will include some resources below so you can read more about it. So in the before we knew about autism times, a thing that a lot of people did was the whole leave your child in the woods to die thing and or pretending that they died and then sending them to an asylum. But that's really sad. So we're not going to talk about it today. It did happen a lot, but we're not going to talk about it. That's another video. Many autistic people in the past lived full lives. There was a lot of he doesn't talk, but he's great at herding sheep and he's a decent guy, so we're just rolling with it. And he's hella weird, but also a genius, so we're just kind of vibing with it. To why won't she follow societal norms for a woman, my goodness. And she doesn't really speak, but she fulfills her duties leading a household perfectly. And other versions of that. It was incredibly common. Also in 15th century Russia, many autistic people were believed to be holy fools who were touched by God and they were given a protected status because of it. And many other cultures had an equivalent situation. There are also many theories about autistic people due to our level of passion, shaping the arts and religion and science and math and all kinds of groundbreaking innovation since the beginning of time. There are also some theories that calendar systems were created and time was kept by autistic people because many studies have linked extreme calendrical abilities almost exclusively to savant syndrome. There's also a good deal of evidence of autism-friendly accommodations being made within various monasteries. And we'll go into the links between religious practices and autistic traits in another video, but let's just take a moment to think about how monks live, because they wear the same thing and they follow the same schedule and they eat the same thing every day. And many monasteries include a vow of silence. Many styles of prayer include repetitive motion. Just throwing it out there. But anyway, the most interesting thing that I found is the story of the changeling child. These are folk stories that can be found all over Europe and Scandinavia, as well as in many Arab nations and Native American tribes. So essentially on every continent, and they describe a child known as a changeling who was taken by supernatural beings or fairies, depending on where the stories are from, and then replaced with one of their own supernatural children. Changelings are typically described as a child who suddenly changes behavior and or appearance at some point in their early lives or at birth and is characterized by unresponsiveness, resistance to touch, inability to express emotion, difference in or lack of speech, etc basically textbook autism. And some stories have also included other disabilities and tips on how to handle your changeling child's behavior. They use these stories as a way to explain and cope with a child's disability. And if you think about it, they're still around in their own way. I mean, there's this whole narrative that autism moms tell saying that their beautiful child was taken away from them and replaced with an autistic child and the notion of grieving a lost child after a diagnosis. It's not great, but thousands of years later, we still have a strikingly similar narrative going on, and it's fascinating to see what humans come up with to describe things. What's also interesting to me is that someone with lower support needs would probably not be called a changeling or even noticed as different because, as we've talked about before, disability only exists within the context of an environment. And in the past, the majority of people lived in small villages. The world wasn't as sensorially overwhelming as it is now, so somebody like me might be seen as fully typical. There's also an argument tied to this that dyslexia and dysgraphia and all that didn't exist in the past and people believe that, but that's only because 90% of the population of the world wasn't literate, so nobody had the ability to notice that it was a thing. And to be clear, I'm not romanticizing the past because no, but I think that it's important to acknowledge that it is possible to live in a society without disability being disabling. It's possible to make a system that is accessible for more people. 
because we did it before, before we knew what accessibility even was. And I've been pondering this idea a good bit, so let me know what you think in the comments. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I have some sources in the description for further reading if you're interested. I'm gonna look more into this and see what other things I can find to try to make another video in the future. But anyway, thank you for listening, thank you for learning, and remember your story isn't over, it has only just begun. I look forward to seeing you in the next one, my dears.